Good morning. Good morning. I'm Pastor Mary Farmer. I am not Pastor Dean Kirst, even though for 20 years this has been the guy who's been here. So I know you're all still adjusting. Um, Dean and Chris are adjusting. They're at the cottage in their jammies. And uh, we are worshiping. We're worshiping together as God's people. We begin our worship as we begin our lives in the Christian community. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, you speak into our lives. Your voice is the strength that gives us strength. May we hear deeply and gain your wisdom so we are empowered to speak your words into our world, our church, our community, and into our families. Remembering our baptisms, we are led once again through the waters of renewal to gain the spirit energy bursting into our lives. Amen. This gospel, the gospel of Epiphany from Mark chapter 1. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to John and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who was more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, if he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, John, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please join me in prayer. In this wintry Wisconsin morning, 
Lord, we remember we're drawn to the water. We're drawn to the crowd that Jesus came from. We're drawn to that muddy river bank. Help us to be drawn into your love, to be drawn into your spirit and the holiness of your energy that comes into our world. We pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Amen. Well, as I was reflecting on this reflection, I realized it's 31 years ago this March that I first came to Lakeview. A lot of y'all are the same folks, and if we were here in the sanctuary, you'd be sitting in the same spot. I know you would. We've known each other for a long time. And I've preached here many times when, since Dean has come and before that, Larry. And Dean would say to me, now preach the gospel, but remember people vote differently. Not everybody votes the same way you do, but preach the gospel. So, okay, folks, we're in Epiphany. In the time of remembering the light bursting, the light of Jesus bursting into our history. It's the season when we're at the water's edge. We come to the River Jordan. There's such vivid images that Mark gives us. John's fashion statement, the camel's hair, the leather belt, and honey and locust are his favorite foods. There's throngs of people from all over the countryside and from the city of Jerusalem that come out to the river's edge, probably churned up and muddy at this point. And this is precisely where Jesus goes into the mud, into the muck, down in this unlikely place to meet John the baptizer. Jesus is ready, ready for the water to be poured over, not just splashed, not little drops, but to be immersed, to be poured over in a steady stream of this Jordan water, reminding us of God's grace, abundant, overflowing all around, washing Jesus, sparkling and in shining into the new light. Coming up out of the water, the heavens are torn apart, they're split open, and a dove, spirit dove, descends on Jesus. And the voice is heard over splashing waters, murmuring, shouting crowds, the voice says, you are my son, you are my beloved, with you I am well pleased. Hear those words, not just as history, but hear those words this morning. How you enter into this gospel time. You are my child, you are my son, you are my daughter, you are the beloved. God says to you this morning, with you I am well pleased. You are beloved. In our Lutheran tradition, we baptize babies who have not done mighty deeds. They haven't answered their catechism questions. They haven't done anything to prove themselves. They come in in blissful unawareness showing us that God's grace comes to us and splashes like water, splashes into thirsty ground, ground ready to soak up life-giving drops. The ground does nothing to earn the water's favor, but it can become lush and fertile in the meeting. We do nothing to earn God's favor. Like Jesus at his baptism, we are still proclaimed God's beloved. God is well pleased with us, anointed with God's favor we are, and we're able to be about Jesus' work in this world. We are the anointed. We are the people.
people who can go out about the goodness of God's plan. We are beloved, we are chosen. I was ready for this reflection when, when I, they signed me up and I signed myself up for this month of being at Lakeview. I was excited to start with this story, this remembrance, this entering into Jesus' baptism. It's such a vibrant, vibrant encouragement to us, a reminder of our own baptism grace. So I was all ready a couple weeks ago. And then came January 6th at 1 o'clock. I have to continue with some other added reflection from that day and from what I believe is gospel call. As we watched in horror, uncontrolled mobs rampaged through one of the centers of democracy, one of the places many of us have visited, not just too long ago, like few folks were there, visited with awe and delight, marveling at history in which we are so proud. And into that very place, some call sacred, we saw the Confederate flag paraded through those halls, this symbol of oppression and slavery carried as a banner, proclaiming its return. People dressed in bizarre costumes. I had to have this explained to me, t-shirts that said six, M N E six and then the letters M N E it means six million is not enough referring to the Holocaust referring to millions and millions of Jews killed in the Holocaust and some sweatshirts that said Camp Auschwitz proclaiming loudly and clearly, with great pride, actually, that it's time to consider more killing. The scaffolding erected with a noose hanging from it, a noose empty, the threat that the lawless crowd would hang someone from it, one of our lawmakers, one of our representatives, to punish that person because Donald Trump was not going to be awarded the presidency. This underlying of white power, racism, an underpinning of all of the chaos of that day. I heard several commentators and other people, my friends, my family, who said, this isn't who we are as Americans. This is not how we do it. And yet, I heard others reflect, this is our history. We have had a segment, a fragment, part of our population who has done things this way. William Cohen, I hadn't remembered him. He spoke, and he's a former Republican legislator and then former Secretary of Defense. He said, this is who we are. These are the Knight Riders of the Ku Klux Klan who came through to terrorize, to burn homes, to lynch people. This is who we are. We have been here before. We need to own that history. People were enslaved. Children have been in cages. We've had a president in Donald Trump who long before he was elected planted division, distrust, and now he lights that flame, the flame of explosion coming together of all of this horrible, horrible history. Eddie Glode, whose name I really can't pronounce correctly, Eddie Glode, is a commentator, and he said, 
We hold on to ignorance in order to preserve our innocence. We ignore facts, we ignore our history so we can come through and be innocent and say, oh my gosh, I never knew, I didn't expect this. We need to know our history. It's time to do our homework. And here at Lakeview, you've been in very involved in serious study, study of scripture and study of current events and study of history to look at the classism, the racism, the homophobia. Don't stop now. Keep up this deep work of examining, renewing, repenting, committing to all God's people in this world. Two prophets that I follow, one is the Right Reverend Stephen Charleston. He was an Episcopal bishop, he's a citizen Choctaw member, and he says something sacred is coming this way. We are living in a time of emergence. We are living in a time of new awareness, and dare I say, new hope, that we can come together to examine and to move forward. Valerie Carr someone I encourage you to check on, Valerie Carr. She's a member of the Sikh religion, she's a teacher, she's a woman of wisdom, and she calls us all to act like midwives. Midwives help with the new birth by breathing and then yelling, push. Breathe. Breathe in hope and breathe in newness and bring it, breathe in awareness and then push. Push and be ready to bring this spirited God into our world, into our country, into our conversation. January 6th was a beginning, many people say, is just the tip of the trauma that can be on its way. The people who were there will keep being in different places, different capitals, different states. This won't be over because we turn off the television. Talk to each other. Listen to each other. Follow up with who you are as God's anointed in the world. I'm going to be here the rest of Sundays in January. If you want to turn off the TV, that's okay. I'm just warning you. If you need to connect with me about this and have some reflection, I really don't... I, there's four people here. You can count them. One, two, three, four. I, I really don't like being in such an empty sanctuary to deliver words that can be searing for some, that can be controversial, that can be difficult. I don't like to do that. I like to have conversation. So if you need to do that, let me know. Check on the church office and they know where to get me. The words of the song, the hymn that John's going to sing for us, I chose a couple weeks ago. I was told, get those hymns to Lynn. So I got the hymns to Lynn. And these words are words that can give us a way that we can be about in this world through the pain we are feeling, through the message of the gospel that needs to come following the chaos and to nourish ourselves in how we can go about this. So John, thank you. Hail the Lord's anointed. And the Lord's anointed is y'all. It's all of you. It's not Jesus just 2,000 years ago. It's all of us anointed to do God's work in the world. Your reign on earth begun. You 
will come to break oppression, to set the captive free, to take away transgression and rule in equity. You come with rescue speedy to those who suffer wrong, to help the poor and needy, and bid the weak be strong, to give them songs for sighing, their darkness turn to light, whose souls condemned and dying are precious in your sight. You shall come down like showers upon the fruitful earth, love, joy, and hope like flowers spring in your path to birth. Before you on the mountains shall peace the herald go, and righteousness in fountains from hill to shall fall down before you and gold and incense bring all nations shall adore you your praise all people sing to you shall prayer unceasing and daily Ascend. Your kingdom still increasing, a kingdom without end. Let us pray. Good God. You revealed your Son in the muddy waters of the Jordan. Anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus began to preach good news to all people. Give each of our hearts imagination and courage, the same as Jesus received, to step out into our world with hope. Sanctify us with the same Spirit to proclaim your gospel's healing power. Give us your wisdom to be involved with acts of love served in your name. Extend our hands into hurting places where people are alone, afraid, hungry, or sick. People who are without jobs and on the edge of finances and security. We bring to this community those who are ill, John Fry, my sister Veronica, who is hospitalized with COVID, and anyone else struggling with that terrible disease. And we ask that as people go about to be vaccinated, give them a sign that this way toward health can be open to all. We pray for Dean and Chris at the cottage in their jammies and ask that as they begin their new life in ministry that your guidance will be open and refresh them. In this new year, we trust you will refresh and renew us to move through these troubled times, finding new ways to lift each other up. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We pray in the kingdom, in the power, and the glory that you have given us. Amen. Wide and spacious love, we are your blessed people, filled with your spirit. Let your love flow from us out into this beautiful and sacred world. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> 